Hey YouTube, happy belated 2014. It's been a long time since my last video, so before I dive into the fun stuff, I wanted to take 30 seconds to update you all on what I've been up to and what I have planned for the near future. For the past few months, I haven't been able to get very much done in terms of projects and videos. It was a combination of life being very busy and me being overly ambitious. I had one project I was hoping to put out before Christmas, another slingshot, but I wasn't completely satisfied with the design so I went back to the drawing board about half a dozen times, and I'm still working on it. If I can get my CNC up and running in the next week or two, you should see it soon enough. I'm still goofing around in Battlefield with what little spare time I have, so expect a funtage in maybe a month or two. I've been slowly accumulating amusing clips using NVIDIA's Shadow Play. A follow-up to my original rant on Hollywood Astrodynamics, Space Combat for Dummies, is also in the works. On the agenda are topics like optimal ship design, and how movies have gotten laser weapons completely wrong. Okay, let's cut to the interesting stuff. The assembly of a ShapeOko 2 desktop CNC milling machine. This won't be an uber-thorough step-by-step instructional video. I can't hope to match the quality of the well-written instructions on the ShapeOko website. At most, this can be considered a mediocre companion video providing alternate views of the assembly process. And I also just want to put out some engineering pornography so that more people can appreciate the nifty design and mechanics of this awesome little machine. The ShapeOko 2 kit ships in a single box that weighs just shy of 30 pounds. The first thing you want to do when it arrives is to check that all of your parts are accounted for. There's a full page inventory that lists all of the mechanical bits inside the box. If you bought the complete kit, the list won't include the electronic parts like the stepper motors or the Arduino, but if you're the kind of person who wants to build a CNC, you probably already know what to check for. Once you're satisfied that you have all the parts, it's highly recommended that you bench test all of the electrical components. Finding a defective Arduino or stepper motor will be far less problematic to fix now than if your CNC is already half assembled. To put the electronics to a full test, wire up the stepper motors to the G-Shield, the G-Shield to the Arduino, and the Arduino to your computer. Lastly, plug in your 12 volt supply from the included MeanWell brand power brick. Using the universal G-Code sender app and the jog function, you can command each of the stepper motors to rotate. You'll also want to test the knockoff Dremel, which will be the spindle for your milling machine. All systems verified, you can now begin assembling the CNC. The first things to put together are the V-wheels and belt idlers. You need to install bearings on the wheels so your CNC can move smoothly. For the V-wheels, you'll want to stack a bearing, a wheel, a precision spacer, and another bearing in that order. The bearings are press fit, although you may want to compress the wheel sandwich with something less fleshy than your fingers. The idler wheels are put together in a similar fashion. The idler has an open end and a closed end, and the bearings can only be packed in from one side. It's designed to be asymmetric when put together. The next step is to assemble the three carriage plates. These are where your X and Y axis motors will mount to, and what will be riding on the maker slide rails. Each plate gets four V wheels and two idlers. Washers are included to ensure proper spacing of the wheels from the plate, and you don't want to mix up these washers with the precision spacers from the previous step. The bottom V wheels are attached by eccentric nuts, which will allow for a tiny bit of play when it comes time to mount the carriage plates on the maker slide rails. The stepper motors are bolted to the carriage plates to finish off this step. The Z-axis is a little trickier to put together. It's recommended that you start by constructing three sub-assemblies, the X-carriage, the spindle carriage, and the Z-rail. Oh, and for reference, this is the X-axis, the Y-axis, and the Z-axis. The X-carriage is what will be moving the cutting tool along the X-axis. It's comprised of two carriage plates, one of which was already made. The second plate doesn't have a motor installed, nor does it have idler wheels, but is otherwise identical to the three carriage plates made earlier. The two plates of the X carriage will be separated by standoffs, but we'll get to that step later. The spindle carriage is assembled on a smaller rectangular plate. On one side, there are four V wheels mounted on it, but no idlers. There's also a Delrin lead nut, which will ride up and down a threaded rod. On the other side, you'll want to attach the clamps that will hold the spindle. The Z-Rail is what the spindle carriage will ride on. It's a 200mm length of maker slide on which a stepper motor is attached. 
It's at this step that we come to the slowest part of the Shapeoko's assembly, tapping the maker slide. In order to bolt anything to the ends of the aluminum extrusion, we have to thread the 4.3mm holes that are there. You'll want to tap all of the maker slide at this point, not just the 200mm section for the z-axis. The half meter segments will also need to be tapped. After a lot of tedious labor, you can return to your 200mm length of maker slide and assemble the stepper motor mount. A shaft coupler will link the stepper motor to an M8 threaded rod. Using wannabe T-slot nuts, officially called insertion nuts and conveniently left unlabeled in my kit, the Z-rail can be attached to the motorless X carriage plate. Then, the spindle carriage may be mounted on the Z-rail assembly by indexing the V-wheels on the maker slide and simultaneously threading the M8 rod into the Delrin lead nut. Finally, bolt on spacers and the second motorized X carriage plate to complete the sub-gantry. The sub-gantry rides on a pair of half-meter maker slide extrusions spanning the X direction. These are bolted to the Y-axis carriage plates using the holes that were tapped earlier. Before both carriage plates are bolted to the maker slide, the sub-gantry and a pair of belt clips should be installed. In a similar fashion to the previous step, the Y-axis rails are attached to end plates. The base of the Shapeoko consists of two MDF wasteboards bolted to a pair of 20mm 80-20 aluminum extrusions. Using the insertion nuts, the end plates supporting the Y-axis rails are bolted to the work area. The final step in assembling the mechanical portion of the Shapeoko 2 is to install the GT2 belts. They run from one belt clip, under an idler, over a timing belt pulley, under another idler, to the belt clip on the other end of each axis. And there you have it, smooth Cartesian motion of an assembled Shapeoko 2 CNC. Next week I'll be wiring up the motors and hopefully running my first program. Hello world, of course. Until then, thanks for watching, YouTube.